everyone, AMR back again with another video. So in today's episode, I am going to be handling all of the week four matchups in the NFL. Uh, the games start here in a little bit, and I just want to go ahead and give a quick rundown as to what the spread is, what the over-under is, um, what time the game is, and then who I think some of the key players are in the game. If you have not seen it already, I uploaded a video earlier today on the channel. Uh, I'll try and link it somewhere up here or over there. And it's all about the injuries of the week four. Um, so as always, if you like today's content, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, host on a ton. But let's go ahead and jump into this. So we have, for our first game up, you have Minnesota at New Orleans. Um, this game is currently probably going on right now. I'm recording this the night before. Uh, Minnesota is favored by two and a half, 44 and a half over under. And then uh, it's a Sunday uh, game over in London. So... I actually do have Minnesota coming out uh, with a victory here. The New Orleans Saints are going to be without Jameis Winston. I have very little confidence in Andy Dalton. Um, I don't think this is a good matchup, though, for Justin Jefferson. I think that you're going to get a much sneakier start out of, like, an, uh, an Adam Thielen or even, like, an Irv Smith. Uh, Chris Olave on the other side is going to be the only really good guy that I want to go ahead and start in this matchup. Maybe a Taysom Hill if you have a quarterback slash tight end for his position some leagues don't allow that i have minnesota covering this line and i have it hitting the over next up we have the seattle seahawks at the detroit lions detroit is favored by six the over under of, on the week is 50 and this is a noon game so i actually have detroit winning this game i don't have them covering the spread of six though i think that that is a very large spread for two teams that are both kind of in that same tier for me I think that Detroit is going to bring a little bit more to the table. That's why I have them winning. But Seattle's kind of been known to stick around games longer than like a lot of us probably thought that they would. Uh, the, the over-under of 50, I have it hitting the under. I don't really see this being a barn burner, especially with Amon Ross St. Brown out, DeAndre Swift out. There's a lot of key pieces here that are just really not going to be lining up. You do have Jeff Okuda on the defensive side for Detroit. So I would go ahead and probably assume that he's going to be up against uh Tyler Lockett, if I had to guess, but he could also go on DK Metcalf. It's going to be a uh, matchup dependent, but I do have Detroit winning this game still. Now we have the New York Jets at Pittsburgh. I have Pittsburgh winning this game. The uh, spread is three and a half to Pittsburgh. I have them covering that spread as well. The over under is 41 and a half, and I have it hitting the under. Look, this game is not going to be fun to watch. You have Zach Wilson coming in for his first start of the 2022 season. And then you got Mr. Bisky on the other side, who's not known to like burn the world down with his fantasy output. So I really do think that this is going to be a rather sluggish, slow game. Uh, if it's not, thank God, because I think that's going to surprise the hell out of a lot of us. Uh, but for the most part, I really think this is going to be straightforward. Start your Deontay Johnson, start your Pat Fryermuth, uh, st start your Najee, but really that's about it on the Jets side of the ball, I really don't see uh, uh, anyone doing all that fantastic, quite honestly. I think that Michael Carter ends up out snapping Brees Hall because Michael Carter is the pass blocking uh, running back as well as a pass catcher. So I, I don't really see this being a fun game on the Jets side of the ball. Now we go over to Chicago at the Giants. Giants are favored by three, and the over-under of this game is 40. So I actually have the Giants winning this game. Uh, I have the Giants not covering the spread of three. I think this is going to be a very, very close game. Uh, and if I say that they're not going to cover the three, I think that's also kind of taking into account a push bet here. I think this is going to be a three-point game exactly. Uh, I, I don't know. Th this game is going to be really, really dud heavy. I think that you have you have two teams who have very good running games. You have Saquon Barkley on one side. You have Khalil Herbert on the other side filling in for an out David Montgomery. Um, th this game is going to go by very, very fast. There's not going to be a whole lot of passing that goes on. You have two very incompetent quarterbacks who also like to get outside the pocket and scramble. Again, just burning through this clock. I have this hitting the under in the contest. Um, Actually, I have this hitting the over in the contest. Sorry about that. Uh, the over-under is 40, and I have it going over. I think that that's a fair approximation. I think that Saquon's going to be fantastic, and so is Khalil Herbert. Um, I really don't know where this game's going to lie, but uh, if you have those two, then great. If not, I'm out on everyone else. Tennessee at Indianapolis. Indianapolis is favored by three, 43 over under. So I actually have Indianapolis winning this game. Indianapolis is favored by three. I have them covering that spread as well. And then I have this game hitting the under. I have not seen anything out of Tennessee that has warranted any type of 
uh, fantasy output or projection. I really do feel like this is going to be a start to finish, uh, run the ball until they give up, basically. And Indianapolis is really known for doing that. I think this is a Jonathan Taylor masterpiece matchup right here. I think that they are going to get some air yards through Michael Pittman Jr. and Alec Pierce. Outside of that, I think I'm good. On the Tennessee side of the ball, Derrick Henry is really your only solid start here. And even that's a big question mark. Indianapolis is a very good defense, so I would have tempered expectations if you're going to be playing Derrick Henry. Now we go over to Los Angeles at Houston. I have Los Angeles uh, Chargers winning this game. Los Angeles favored by six. I think that they're actually going to hit that uh, spread as well. And then uh, 45 and a half over under. I have this hitting the over. I think Houston's good enough to get some points on the board. How many? I don't really know. You have a somewhat injury prone defense as well as offense on the Chargers side. Houston's kind of been on the up and up. You don't know what you're going to see out of them. On the Chargers side of the ball, this is a make or break game for Austin Eckler. I mean, he's just gotten way too slow of a start. It looks like he's lost a step. I really do feel like if he doesn't break out in this game, you may end up having to sell or just cut ties with him altogether. On the other side of the ball, you have Damian Pierce, who is on the inverse of that. He is going on the up and up, getting more snaps every week, and had his first 100 rush yard game. I think this is another really, really great start for Damian Pierce as well. And on the Chargers side of the ball, uh, outside of Austin Eckler, you're obviously going to play Justin Herbert. You're obviously going to play Michael Williams if you have him. But I think that the sneaky start here is going to be Joshua Palmer. He has been fantastic in games that Keenan Allen has missed, as well as Gerald Everett. Gerald Everett has been a target machine. Now, he's not been able to haul in a lot of his targets, uh, at least last week anyway. And so I think that that comes with a little bit of risk, but overall, it's going to pay off in the end. Cleveland at Atlanta. I have Atlanta winning this game. Cleveland is favored by two and a half. Obviously, I do not have that spread being uh, covered. And then 48 and a half over under. I have this hitting the over. I really do think that you have two offenses here that are just trying to figure out what type of play style that they want to be running. Cleveland re realistically should not have the win against Carolina. They did come back in that game. You know, a win is a win, however you want to put it down. But uh, Cleveland's been narrowly escaping a lot of these games. Um, they're good enough on the ground to uh, establish the run early. You got Amari Cooper having a breakout year. Um, I mean, breakout start anyway. And David Njoku had his first big game in a while. So you don't know what David Njoku is going to bring to the table in this matchup. On the other side, you have Atlanta. Atlanta has been... So flashy for being such a you know, mid-team. You have uh, Cordell Patterson, who has shown brilliancy at the running back positioning, uh, at, the, at the running back position, finishing as the RB4 in two weeks of the three weeks that, was, that have been played. And I think this is going to be another one of those games where you see Cordell Patterson have a monster week. Uh, he's going to be fantastic in this matchup. Kyle Pitts is going to be very good as well. Drake London, if you have him, you're obviously going to be playing him. Uh, Washington at Dallas. So I actually have Dallas winning this game. Dallas by three. I do not have that spread covered. And then uh, 42 over under. I have this hitting the over. Look, Dallas is one of those teams that has been narrowly escaping a lot of their victories. Um, but that being said, their defense is so good, but their offense is still figuring stuff out. Washington's one of those teams that really just never gives up. We saw it last week where uh, even though they were down by 24 points the entire game, they still managed to get eight points in the end. It's not it's not going to make a difference in the game overall, but I think that Washington's one of those teams that will just kind of death by a thousand cuts on their opponent. And Dallas has been known to do these uh, all-or-nothing plays with Trayvon Diggs. You could definitely see him having a uh, game where he tries to overextend and then it's a breakout touchdown for Jahan Dotson or maybe a Terry McLaurin. Don't really know. Carson Wentz has had two 300 plus passing yard games this season. Uh, I think that this is going to be a fun game. Uh, it's a divisional game. And uh, Jacksonville at Philadelphia. You have I have Philadelphia winning this game. Philadelphia is favored by seven. I do not have that spread covered. And then a 48 and a half over under. I have it hitting the over. I have it hitting the over here. Uh, Big reason here, okay, so Jacksonville has shown me things that I really like seeing. Doug Peterson's doing a phenomenal job down in Jacksonville. Trevor Lawrence is actually looking like a competent NFL quarterback for the first time in his career. Um, you have Travis Etienne and James Robinson both benefiting in this backfield. You have a very talented uh, Christian Kirk and 
Zay Jones and Marvin Jones Jr. Like this team is all around very, very good, and they haven't really even unlocked that uh, next target share person, which would be an Evan Ingram. He's had a couple games here and there, but like for the for the most part, this team is showing all kinds of different avenues that they can score the football. However, Philadelphia's defense is phenomenal. I think that Philadelphia is going to own this game quite a bit. I think it's going to be a push. I think that Philadelphia wins by seven. Um, I don't know what the total score will be. I think that Philadelphia jumps out to an early lead, kind of maintains it for a little bit. They put their foot off the gas a little bit. Jacksonville scores a couple garbage time game or garbage time uh, scores, and then the game ends up like a twenty-one to fourteen, or maybe even like a twenty-eight twenty-one. Don't really know. <clears throat> Next up, you got Buffalo at Baltimore. I have Buffalo winning this game. Buffalo three and a half favorite. I do not have them covering that spread. 52 and a half over under, and I have this hitting the over. So I think this is going to be one of those games where it is start to finish, just watching these two teams go at it. I think that Lamar Jackson is a phenomenal play in this game. You have a Buffalo defense who has been littered with injuries. You have a Baltimore defense who has been littered with injuries. You have two offenses that are at the very top echelon on the entire NFL. It's going to be a fun game. If you have any pieces in this game, literally any of the pieces outside of Dawson Knox, I really do feel like this is going to be a very, very fun game for you as a fantasy owner. Arizona at Carolina. I have Carolina winning this game. Arizona is favored by one and a half. I do not have that spread covered, obviously. And then a 44 and a half over under. I have this hitting the under and I do have Carolina winning. So that means that I think this is going to be a very inefficient day for Kyler Murray, I don't really see this being a fun game to watch by any means. Chris McCaffrey is going to be playing in this game. I don't know how much he's going to be utilized, if he's going to be on some type of a like a snap count or what have you, but there's been some pretty big news coming out uh, this past week from uh, Matt Rule, who said that the receivers need to get open more. So that's interesting take for him trying to defend his quarterback, but not his wide receivers. Uh, I think this is going to be an angry game from Carolina, and then Arizona is going to really struggle to get any points on the board here. Denver at Las Vegas. I'm going to take Vegas. Uh, Vegas by one and a half. I have them covering that. And a 43 over under. I have this hitting the under. Look, we'd all love to see what we all thought would happen in this game, which would be like a 31 to 38 game. Uh, when they got Russell Wilson on Denver, and then you got Devontae Adams on Vegas. But it just really hasn't panned out that way, at least not this far. Denver looks atrocious on offense. I don't know if it's a coaching thing, if it's a Russell Wilson thing. Um, I don't think it's a receiver thing. I think that they have a ton of talent there. It's just not gelling just quite yet. And then Las Vegas, I mean, Denver's defense has been phenomenal. So I don't think that Derek Carr is going to have a tremendous amount of success against this uh, Denver defense. So this could really be one of those games that is, again, not super fun to watch. It could end up going to overtime, like a 10 to 10 game or even like a 14 to 14 game. It's not going to be fun for anyone involved. The only people that I really want to start in this game are going to be Cortland Sutton, Javante Williams, and then on Vegas side, uh, you know, Devonte Adams, maybe a Mac Collins as like a dart throw. And then, uh, obviously, uh, Darren Waller. Now we go over to New England at Green Bay. I have Green Bay winning this game. I have them covering the 10.5 spread, which is the largest spread on the week. And then a 39 over a 39.5 over under. I have this hitting the over. I saw the news come out that Mac Jones is going to be playing. Or no, I'm sorry. I saw the news come out that Mac Jones is out. So Brian Hoyer is going to be Brian Hoyer is going to be the quarterback in this one. Green Bay's defense has been pretty great, ex- except for when they're going against the run. New England has some good rushers with Ramondre Stevenson and Damian Harris. I think that both of those are fine plays this week, but everyone else on this New England offense, I want to stay as far away as possible. Green Bay, start them all. Robert Tunyon included. I feel like you're going to have a very fun week. The only toss-up I have in the air right now is whether or not it's Christian Watson or Romeo Dobbs. The answer remains unclear right there. Romeo Dobbs had a very good last week. Christian Watson's been dealing with some injuries. So next up, we have a very, very fun game. It is a rematch of Super Bowl 55. You have Kansas City at Tampa Bay. I have Tampa Bay winning this one. Kansas City by two and a half. I do not have that being covered. 44 over under. I have this hitting the over. I think this is going to be a very fun game to watch. It's Sunday night football. Um, and for that reason alone, it's going to be fun, right? Uh, I think that Tom Brady has a get right game. 
Um, he's been very frustrated with the receivers. A lot of them have been super banged up, and it's been hard to come by. Uh, they're coming off a loss to Green Bay. Kansas City's coming off a loss to Indianapolis. Both these teams are going to come out hot out of the gate. I think it's literally just about which defense is going to be better. And for that reason, I think that Tampa Bay's defense is just going to be that little edge that they need to come out victorious here. Lastly, on our week here, we have Monday Night Football, which will be the Rams at San Francisco. Always a very fun matchup. I have the Rams winning this one on the road. San Francisco's favorite at two and a half. I do not have that being covered. 44 over under, and I have this hitting the over as well. I think Cooper Cup has a phenomenal game. He was very limited in his work last week, not because of injury, but just of efficiency. He was not getting the ball very much. Allen Robinson, I, I don't even want to think about him as like a person. He's just... Yeah, uh, don't don't play him. Cam Akers, I have obviously going to be playing. Stafford, I haven't played. Tyler Higby's going to be a fantastic start as well on the San Francisco 49er side of the ball. Really, it's only going to be Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk. Everyone else, I'm kind of hesitant on. I don't know if I want to have any other moving pieces on the San Francisco side, including George Kittle and Jeff Wilson. Now, <clears throat> before I cut today's video, I want to talk about some of the hot starts that I have on today's week. So at quarterback, I have Justin Herbert, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Aaron Rodgers, Matt Ryan, Lamar Jackson, and Cooper Rush, with the top two being Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. They're both in the same game. Like I said, I think this is going to be the highest scoring game of the week. You want all moving pieces here. Um, Lamar Jackson has like 40 plus fantasy points two weeks in a row. Josh Allen looks phenomenal every single week. Now the one sleeper pick I do have as Cooper Rush. He's going against a Washington defense that is super depleted. You're going to have him trying to air the ball out. You're getting Michael Gallup back. You have Noah Brown who's going to be in the mix. You have uh, C.D. Lamb, obviously. Dalton Schultz is questionable. I don't think he plays. Uh, but you have Tony Pollard. I mean, there's going to be so many things going right for him that it's going to be kind of hard for him to have a bad fantasy day if he doesn't you know, get injured or something. On the running back side, I have Jamal Williams, Saquon Barkley, Cleo Herbert, Jonathan Taylor, Damian Pierce, Austin Eckler, Cordell Patterson, Tony Pollard, Devin Singletary, Ramondre Stevenson, and Leonard Fournette. My top two on the week are going to be Saquon Barkley and Jonathan Taylor. I think Barkley's matchup against Chicago is just screaming, pick me. Uh, he's going to have a phenomenal week. Same thing goes for Jonathan Taylor in a divisional matchup against the Tennessee Titans. I think it is going to be, you know, Jonathan Taylor versus Derrick Henry. Which one's going to be better? And I just think that Tennessee's not that good. I think that Indianapolis is going to want to run the ball down the throat of the opposition, and this week it just happens to be the Titans. Jonathan Taylor in a get-right game. The sleeper pick on the week is going to be Ramondre Stevenson. I feel like New England is going to be trailing a lot in this game against Green Bay. Ramondre Stevenson has been known to be the pass-catching back. He's also the backup, so they're going to take Damian Harris out. I think he out-snaps Damian Harris and has a higher chance to score in this game. That's why I'm picking him as my sleeper. The wide receiver position, Adam Thielen, Josh Reynolds, DK Metcalf, Michael Pittman Jr., Mike Williams, Joshua Palmer, Drake London, Chris Olave, CeeDee Lamb, Devonta Smith, Stefan Diggs, Rashad Bateman, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, Mike Evans, Cooper Cup, and Brandon Ayuk slash Debo Samuel. So my top three wide receivers on the week are going to be Stefan Diggs, CeeDee Lamb, and Michael Pittman Jr. in that order. Like I said, Stefan Diggs, he's just going to be the complement to the Josh Allen. I really do think he's going to have a phenomenal week. There's not a whole lot of other options on this offensive uh, pass-catching team. You have Gabe Davis, who's lingering with an injury. He might play. He's not going to be 100%. I don't see him being much of a threat. Uh, CeeDee Lamb, I mean, I think that they're going to try and ease Michael Gallup into the system. I don't think that he's going to be ready for 100% workload. CeeDee Lamb's been getting tons of target, like 11, 11, and 12 targets on the season. CeeDee Lamb is an awesome pick. Michael Pittman Jr. Um, Tennessee's been pretty bad against the pass. I think that Matt Ryan actually isn't terrible this week. Uh, I have him listed as a quarterback that you might be able to stream in most of your leagues. Michael Pittman Jr. is going to have a phenomenal week. Uh, and then, so my two sleepers on the wide receiver position are going to be Adam Thielen and Josh Reynolds, Adam Thielen, uh, mostly because I think Justin Jefferson is going to be locked down with Marshawn Lattimore uh, covering him. And then uh, Josh Reynolds, you have Amon Ross St. Brown and DJ Chark both out in this contest. So Josh Reynolds is just going to be like really their only option through the air to get into the end zone. <clears throat> Now, 
at the tight end position, I have Irv Smith Jr., TJ Hawkinson, Pat Fryermuth, Bellinger, Gerald Everett, David Njoku, Kyle Pitts, Mark Andrews, Darren Waller, Robert Tunyon, and Tyler Higby. Okay, so my top two tight ends on the week are going to be number one, Mark Andrews, and number two, Robert Tunyon. Same reason I picked Stefan Diggs uh, for the wide receivers, the number one, is the reason why I'm picking Mark Andrews. I think that Mark Andrews is the number one receiver slash tight end, whatever you want to call him, on the Baltimore Ravens, and that's just going to be a juicy matchup. He's had phenomenal back-to-back weeks. I think this is another really good week for him. Robert Tunyon, he's obviously a phenomenal talent. He's coming off the injury that happened last season. He's had a slow start here to 2022, but I think this is a game where you can really, really play him. New England is giving up a ton of fantasy points against the tight end, and I think that you have a breakout game for him. The sleeper pick here is going to be Bellinger, uh, tight end for the Giants against the Chicago team. I think that this is going to be one of those games where not a lot of options to pass to. you got Kadarius Tony's out. Wondell Robinson's out. Kenny Galladay can't catch the ball even if you throw it to him. You have Richie James Jr., which, okay, you want to throw it to him? Go ahead. Uh, Sterling Shepard, out for season. Saquon Barkley, okay, sure. I really I really just think that Bellinger is going to be a sneaky play here that not a lot of people are going to have. Uh, over on the defensive side, I have Detroit, Green Bay, and Philadelphia. Number one defense is going to be Green Bay. Number two is going to be Philadelphia. And then for that sleeper pick, I have Detroit. I just think that Geno Smith has trouble uh, passing the football, and I think that Detroit has made a lot of improvements on their defense. But that's going to do it for today's episode. As always, if you like today's content, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Up to a ton, but I'll catch you in the next one. See you.